Hey guys, Jimmy Vegas here, and let's take a look at how we can create a secret area based achievement for your Unity game. And don't forget, click the subscribe button, click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial in this mini series, as well as everything else on my channel. And with that in mind, let's get to work. So, the idea of creating a secret area based achievement or trophy is fairly simple and straightforward and it kind of works on the same premise as what we created when we for example got to the end of a level obviously there isn't quite as much to do and there is some slight differences to it so as always what we need to do is firstly set up that image for the achievement and work just a couple of things out in the ui so the achievement panel all we need to do is let's duplicate the time-based achievement that we did last time, so hold control, press D, and let's rename that to 04 secret area. And yep, yeah, I've already got a little image right there that I'm gonna use, and you probably noticed this from the thumbnail of the video. So drag and drop over onto there, and yep, yeah, that's ready to go. So it all comes down to modifying the script again, which is the global achievement script. So let's head into there. So all we need to do is let's declare a couple of variables. So as I've always done, let's do achievement zero for specific. So the idea is, I will show you back in Unity, uh, over here we have a little cave and I'm gonna class this as a bit of a secret area. So once we discover this secret area, we get the achievement or trophy. So all we need to do is do what we've done before. So we're going to have public game object and it'll be atch, again, short for achievement, o for image, semicolon. And then we're going to have public static bool trigger atch o for. By default, we will have that as false, semicolon. And finally, we will have that integer once again. So public int and h04 code semicolon. So hopefully by now, this being the fourth tutorial in the series, you should be able to see how simple it is to kind of keep going and building your whole achievement. So you could end up having 20, 30, 40, 50 achievements or trophies in your game, all based around one global achievement script. So much like the others, we have to go h04 code equals player preps dot get int and in brackets and quotes. Let's just follow suit here. Keep everything neat and tidy. So it's h04. And then obviously we need to create another if statement just here. So same as last time and time before and time before that. If trigger h04 is equal to true and h04 code is not equal to 12348 or whatever integer you want to assign to that then we do start co routine and in brackets trigger 04 h oh close bracket close bracket semicolon and I'm going to save that script for now. Uh, obviously, we've not written that coroutine yet, so it kind of doesn't matter too much. But what we need to do now is focus on the actual triggering script, which goes within our secret area. So what we need to do for that is game object, 3D object cube, that will act as our trigger. And I'm just going to bring it into position. So roughly when we want to enter the cave, that's when it triggers. So I'm just going to rotate it to be at least fairly uh, aligned with the cave. Uh, expand it just a little, uh, make sure it fits into place. So it's going to be round about when we enter the cave. So we'll have the trigger about there. Again, it's all dependent on your own secret area. So whatever your area, that is where you would have your trigger. So I'm going to turn off Mesh Renderer and click Is Trigger right there. And as I said earlier, it does work on the same principle as our level finish script. So what I'm going to do is right click, create C sharp script. We'll have this as secret trigger. Open that up in Visual Studio. Eventually. 
There we go. So if we go to the previous script that we did, which is level finish, we can actually use the same kind of routine here. So rather than retype the script, let's copy everything from void on trigger enter all the way down to the end of our coroutine. So this curly bracket right here, we can copy that, go to secret trigger and let's get rid of void start void update and any annotations. And then we can paste what we have there. Obviously we can get rid of the fade out because we don't need it. The only reason we had that was because we did originally fade out and I guess we don't even really need it to be a coroutine. We could just trigger it as soon as we uh, cross the trigger. But I would like to give it just a couple of seconds wait before we actually do the trigger. So I'm going to say uh, wait for maybe 1.5 seconds. And then what we'll do is have global achievements dot trigger H O four equals true. And rather than have this coroutine as end level, I want to have secret cave. And we need to change that right there. Secret cave and save that script. So that one is all ready to go because obviously as soon as we trigger, the cave area, it will come to here. Wait for one and a half seconds to make sure we are in it. You don't necessarily have to have that line if you don't want to. I just want to give it a brief moment. And then it changes the trigger to true, which means back in global achievements, we can now trigger this coroutine. So we'll do that in just a second. We need to first attach this script to the cube, which is cube six right there. So drag and drop that script onto cube six. Oh, of course. Yeah, we do need to write that code routine first. It probably would help. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy uh, one of these code routines. So I've taken number two there and let's go below and let's change it to trigger zero four patch. And obviously we need to change everything that's relative to that achievement. So H, uh, active equals true. Yes. So this one needs to be changed to four. And uh, we set that code as one, two, three, four, eight. Then we set the player prefs. So that's going to be number four. And again, relative to number four, play the sound, set the image active, which is number four. Uh, the title is going to be um, secretive, I guess. You found a secret cave area i guess that'll do and uh the note yep that's fine so and then we wait and then we turn everything off so achievement image four goes off title resets description resets and everything resets by turning the active one to false so let's save that script head back into unity and just let it compile down there we should have that error disappear and there we go. So let's take that secret trigger onto cube. And it's probably wise renaming that. So we'll have that as cave trigger. And remember, make sure we do have is trigger ticked right there because that is vital. Uh, one thing I will say on this though, we may need to actually turn the box collider off on that trigger. I think that might be a wise idea. So let's go back to our scripts, secret trigger. And Let's have after the start coroutine, this dot get component, spiky brackets, box collider, open close bracket dot enabled equals false. Just so we can't re-trigger over and over and over and over and over and over. Although nothing will actually happen, we just don't want to kind of allow the script to keep trying to run this coroutine right here. So save that script. Head back to Unity and it should just quickly recompile and it does. That should be fine. So we don't need to do anything to our cave trigger because no variables to set there. The only thing we need to do is on our achievement log, we just need to set number four image. So drag and drop secret area over there. I'm going to save my scene and I'm going to press play. And let's check out this secret area achievement. So, yeah, there is our cave. Let's head all the way over here and into our cave. 
there we go. And we've just triggered that in-game achievement. So I think it definitely is worth pointing out at this point all of our other achievements do work as well. So I think what I'd like to do right now is um, it's probably a good idea if we set in our void start. Um, let me think. Let's do it after here because I want to show you that we can trigger multiple achievements in one play. So rather than have all of these there, what I'm going to do is annotate them out and save and then back to Unity. And I do think that we should be able to trigger all the achievements without those. You obviously wouldn't need to do that. I just want to kind of demonstrate that we can do all of this in one play now. So firstly, let's trigger that time-based achievement. Hopefully, there we go. Now let's trigger the uh, collection one, because you remember we have all of these to collect. Uh, then we'll do the cave one, and then we'll finish the level. So. There we go. So we've got our collection based achievement there. So let's try the cave one. Hopefully. There's our cave achievement. And now let's do the finish one. I believe it was somewhere here. Or was it down over here? I, I, gosh, I can't quite remember. Let me have a quick look in the scene view because it was level finish, wasn't it? So it's there. And where's our player? Oh, it's just behind us. Okay, so if we turn around and go here, I think it was, was it? There we go. There we go. So that is how we can actually trigger all of the achievements in one go. And no matter what you do, because we're going to do more achievements, uh, obviously. So all you would need to do to kind of test it out is just annotate out everything you have right there and you can test it, but make sure you do put them back into there because when you take out those annotations, you won't be able to re-trigger them because obviously it will set those codes as whatever is stored there. Uh, at one point towards the end of this mini series, we will go through a way of resetting all achievements uh, to start all over again if you want to. So that is how we can create a secret area-based achievement or trophy in your Unity game. Guys, thank you very much for watching.